This episode of Motoring Box is proudly supported by Century Batteries. Whenever I'm buying a used car, there's a long list of criteria that I have that must be satisfied first. To begin with, it should be low mileage, preferably under 180,000 kilometers. Secondly, the bodywork should be in very good condition, no dents and definitely no paint fade. Next up, it should be in a color which I find appealing, which is pretty much anything except for red or black. It also needs to have a really neat interior with no damage, no missing pieces. And when you pop the glove box, there should be a nice fat folder full of service history. And finally, the car needs to be registered with a roadworthy certificate provided, ready to go. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got myself into this situation. Well, it all started about two days ago when I found this dirty old 2002 Mitsubishi Magna Rally Art listed on Marketplace. It was dirty, rough around the edges and looking like someone had already started stripping it for parts. I probably should have moved on and gone back to looking at AU Falcons or VS Commodores, but this thing wouldn't let me go. Why? What's the go with Magnas? Aren't they just a Mitsubishi Gallant or Diamante which Mitsubishi got hold of and sort of fiddled around with? Why do people rave on and on about how good these front wheel drive six cylinder sedans are? A recipe like that is not something I've ever been interested in trying, like ever. But how do you know you hate it unless you actually give it a taste? I had to have a look, and so the very next day on my work lunch break, I went and did just that. I only had 10 minutes. Seriously, 10 minutes. 600 seconds. I sat in the driver's seat and had a poke around. I popped the bonnet to have a look for any liquid horsepower trying to escape from the mighty 6G74. And then I took it for a drive down the street and back. That was it. Time was up. I knew that I had to make a decision then and there, otherwise I was potentially going to miss out. So I said yes, and I paid the man the full $5,500 asking price, and here we are in the driver's seat. So $5,500 you ask, why would I pay that amount of money? Well, I'll get to that in a second, but let's go for a drive in this thing and see how it actually performs. And let me just show you what I'm actually dealing with here. So we've got a really worn Momo steering wheel, uh, and we've got a completely missing center stack fascia, stereo. I'm a bit informed as well, there's no speakers. But that's kind of cool because it gives us a chance to sort of install something of our own. And if there were existing speakers, I was probably going to rip them out anyway. From first inspections, the only other thing that is missing are like the little surrounds of the door handles. It's missing on all four of them. Apparently they broke. Uh, but yeah, let's fire this thing up and see how she goes. Now I'm not sure whether this thing has an aftermarket exhaust or whether someone's just hacked one of the mufflers off, but it is fairly loud. It is not overbearing, but it sounds good. See what I mean? So yeah, interesting. I've always been a Falcon guy. I've driven Commodores as well, but I've never actually driven a Magna. So it is interesting that we are starting off on the hottest Magna of them all. So yeah, this thing needs a bit of work, but it hopefully won't be above the realm of what I can handle. Uh, and definitely, once we get to the end of the road with this thing, it will need some paint. Uh, probably not gonna paint it myself, but let's not get ahead of ourselves here. There's still plenty of things to fix first. But here we are. That was 3000 RPM. This thing redlines at six and a half. When you're just sort of cruising around, it sort of doesn't really give anything away that it's front wheel drive. It just sort of feels like a big Aussie six cylinder rear wheel drive car. Sounds good. So what do you think about this thing guys? Do you reckon I paid too much money? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise we'll continue our drive home. This thing is actually unregistered at the moment, so I have a, a day permit. It does still have plates on it, I think you meant to take them off. But driving one of these without plates I think would be a little bit too conspicuous, so I'm leaving them on. So as I mentioned in the introduction, this car does not have any maintenance or service history. Uh, I was able to guess that the cam belt needs to be replaced, that is a thing on Magnus. Um, if you're coming from Falcons, they all have timing chains. These have timing belts. 
So uh, the previous owner owned this thing since about 2017, 2018, and he did not get the belt changed during his ownership. So who knows how long it's been before that. Apparently you need to change them every 100,000 Ks or every five years. So at a minimum, it's five years old. It could be way older and it's something that you can't really check until you tear the front of the engine apart, unfortunately. And you know, one other really surprising thing that I've learned from driving this car is the throttle response is really sharp, like crazy sharp. You sort of have to be really delicate with it because if you just stab it a little bit, it just, <laughs> it's off. Like this car just wants to go. And I'm getting a glimpse of that uh, rally art wing in the mirror. You know, the styling of this car is probably going to be very divisive in the comment section. When I first saw them a couple of years ago on the internet, I thought they looked pretty horrendous. I didn't like the front bar design, uh, but Having seen it for a while now and, and seeing this one in the flesh in black, I think it looks pretty good. It probably looks a little bit too hot for 180 kilowatts. It's got a beautiful note, especially when you sort of uh, downshift and you blip the throttle. A few little pops there. budget Lexus LFA. You know the LFA has that really amazing, you know, F1 sort of exhaust note? This is kind of 5K LFA, if you like. <laughs> this thing is a riot. There was a little bit of torque steer as well, and if you guys don't know what torque steer is, all you rear wheel drive guys, it's when you accelerate and you feel the steering wheel sort of tugging in your hands a little bit. Uh, there was a little bit of shimmying around, not too crazy. It is a hot day today and the aircon's on and it's nice and cold, so that's good. I do need a car with air conditioning up here in Queensland. <laughs> Still pretty quick, you know, I wasn't giving it the full 100% throttle off the line there sort of 70 or 80 and I went easy on the gear change a little bit but it's still quick like it still chirped the tires off the line there too probably because of the painted line but you know pretty decent there is going to be a little bit of carkeology in this car too I've noticed already some things lurking in the center console down beside the seats and whatnot so it's going to be an adventure but look that's enough talk from me let's pull on over and have a look at this thing and I'll let you know why it is so special Now today is extremely hot and this is the only easy bit of shade I could find. But why did I actually buy this car? Well, as I mentioned, it is a little bit special and that's because when Mitsubishi were planning this car, they created a Mitsubishi Magna Rally Art concept car. And it pretty much looked exactly like this, except it had a four wheel drive system lifted from the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 6. And it also had a few other bits and bobs like Recaro seats. Unfortunately, due to budget constraints, the production version lost both of those things. But we still ended up with the hottest Magna Mitsubishi Australia ever made. The 3.5 litre engine was chucking out 180 kilowatts and 333 newton metres of torque, exclusively through the front wheels. And Mitsubishi Australia were able to get that amount of power out of this engine thanks to more aggressive cam profiles, modified cylinder heads which also gave the engine higher compression, stainless steel HM headers flowing into a sports exhaust system, and all topped off with a revised ECU map. Magna Rally Arts also came standard with Anki wheels which mine doesn't actually have fitted at the moment but they're in the back, and also Coney dampers which I'm not sure if this car still has anymore. So, that is one reason why this car is so special, but the other reason is they made just 500 Magna Rally Arts. And you could only buy this car in four different spec combinations. You could get an automatic or you could get a manual. And then you could choose from a sunroof or not. 
So there's only four possible combination of cars you could actually get. <laughs> really, the only other choice you had was what colour you wanted it to be. There was flame red, Mawson white, pewter silver, sable black, which I've got here, and wasp yellow. And I believe with wasp yellow, there was only two cars produced in that colour, by far making it the rarest one out there. So out of those 500 cars, only 130 of them were manual. And manual is the one you really wanted because Manual cars came with an LSD diff. The automatics came with an open diff and Mitsubishi tacked on traction control to sort of make up for that one tire fire which you were probably going to experience. So out of those 130 manual Magna Rally Arts, just 28 were painted in sable black. And out of those 28 cars, 10 of them had a sunroof and 18 didn't. So this car is a one of 18, which makes it pretty exclusive and that was 20 years ago so how many of these things are actually left apart from needing a respray which is obvious i uh, cannot see any major bodywork that needs to be done i have not seen any rust yet but i've not seen under this car so it's a bit hard to say a bit early days yet on that um, obviously the bumpers have had a little hit here or there but whatever's happened they've kind of popped back out to where they should be uh, there is a bit of a chip here or a crack on the side skirt but uh, I can see if I can try and plastic weld that. There might be other solutions available. But yes, all present. Uh, it does have a set of speedy carbine wheels on it, which I don't like. I mean, some people will like it. It's kind of like a black on black. The design of them is not too bad. They do need to be refinished, but in the back, well, three of them are in the boot, but the fourth one of the stock Enki 17 inch wheels is here in the back seat. So this is a very similar design to the Evo 6 or 7 wheels, Lancer, but I think the offset is a little bit different. So some people put Lancer wheels on these to get a more aggressive kind of an offset, uh, but these look all right. So we'll probably clean them up, see if they need to be reconditioned. This one looks okay, a little bit of rash. Nothing crazy though. Um, as far as the inside goes, it's not bad. There are a few missing pieces, like the little surrounds behind the door handles. Uh, everything just needs a really good clean. So I'm probably going to strip everything out, like I've done with some of my other cars. Take the seats out, take the carpet out, and just clean the hell out of everything. But I have to say, I'm pretty excited to see how well this car cleans up. Uh, it might surprise us all. And of course, Magnus do have pillarless doors, or pillarless windows, I guess you'd call it. Kind of like a Subaru Impreza. There's just no frame around the top of the window, which is pretty cool. Back seats and, and trims and everything are in a little bit better condition. But yeah, we're not gonna know until we give this car a bit of a tidy up. So there is some work to be done, but really this car cost me five and a half thousand dollars. I've seen stock Magnus going for that much. So I think it's a pretty good deal. If you're not afraid of getting your hands dirty, which I'm not. Yeah, look at this sunburn. <laughs> look at this clear coat. It's just melting off the car. It's obviously seen a lot of sun in its life. It must have gone through a few years where it was ungaraged, I guess, potentially. Um, but yeah, what are you gonna do about it? I don't know any car from sort of this age period that's got mint condition black paint, unless it's literally lived in a garage its entire life. So if we turn the ignition on, we've got 247, 462 on the clock. We've got the nice red rally art gauges there. Uh, it is a manual, of course, so we've got the five speed. It seems okay. It did sort of crunch third a little bit when it was cold, but when it warmed up, it was beautiful. Uh, my BA XR6 Turbo does a similar thing, so I don't really think it's anything to worry about. Uh, we do have a little bit of a tear on the bolster there, a bit of wear. Um, you could probably get those reconditioned. Now, I hope that these red sections of fabric will actually clean up pretty well. I reckon they might with a wet vac. Um, you could even get these done in leather if you wanted to, the bolsters, or at the very least, just get the material sort of redone. Uh, let's have a look at the party piece, shall we? So here we have the 3.5 litre V6. So as I mentioned, Magna Rally Arts had more aggressive camshaft profiles. They had different heads. Not really sure what they did to those heads, whether they just kind of shaved them to sort of bring them down and increase the compression ratio. They do have stainless steel headers, as I mentioned. You can just get a peek of those there under the heat shield. Nice to see they are still there. And yes, different ECU tuning, different level of tuning there. More free-flowing exhaust system. 
Uh, but yeah, everything here looks okay, you know. I think it's missing a battery cover, which you can still find on eBay. I've actually scoped that out. Uh, it looks like it's running water, <laughs> so I'm going to have to have a look at that. Uh, actually, that's a windscreen. See, I don't know anything about these engines. Uh, I don't know, is there actually a coolant tank or is it just a radiator? I think it's just a radiator. Oh, there's a, there you go, coolant. See, I'm learning as we go. So, that kind of looks like water as well. Isn't that funny? If this was a Falcon, I would fully think that's the radiator overflow and then that'd be for the windscreen, but it's the opposite. So we're going to be going on a learning adventure together and by all means, if you know a lot about these cars or if you spot something about this one or something I should know about, let me know in the comments section because yeah, like I've seen these in pictures but I don't really know anything else about them. Uh, and we are of course, here we are, Magna 122. So if you want to look that up, I will provide a link to a spreadsheet but yes, number 122 is a black manual car. So everything else checks out, which is good to know because Things can be swapped around and cars can be reshelled and lots of things. Uh, so the VIN as well is a, a proper Magna Rally Art VIN, I've checked that. Uh, yeah, sounds good. I, I think it's a pretty amazing sounding engine. It's not the most powerful thing in the world when you come from Falcons, especially an XR6 Turbo. But it does have a lot of theatre about it. I really hope that came across in the drive home. So I really hope you like the car, I'm pretty stoked with it. I'm looking forward to getting to know it a little bit more. There's a lot of things about this car which is brand new to me. It's all foreign. But these things are going to be future classics. They are going up in value and I think five and a half grand for the condition. I think it's a fair deal. One last thing I'll say about these cars is it's really hard to find some of the unique parts that this car has. So it's got wheel arch flares, it's got the unique body kit with the front and rear bumpers. But even things like this badge right here, you cannot find these anymore. So things like that are going to be quite troublesome to buy. Uh, things that are easier are things like tail lights. So I think these are aftermarket tail lights. They're like clear ones. Don't like them. I'm going to find a set of the proper red tail lights, which this car should have. If anyone's interested in these, hit me up. Maybe we can even trade for a set of stock ones if they're in good condition. So that's it guys, I'll leave it there. If you want to support the channel, do consider grabbing a Homegrown Heroes t-shirt from motoringbox.com. I also have window stickers back in stock for just a couple of bucks. This car's going to cop some of them very soon. They look really good. It's a great way to support the channel and get something in return. But yeah, really hope you're excited as much as I am. Every time I look at this car, I can see just a whole lot of jobs that need to be done. So we're going to get stuck into it soon. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. I'll see you soon.